All right, 4.7 on L'Hopital's rule. Uh, we're going back to limits for this lesson, so get your mindset right as you jump into this. Uh, L'Hopital's rule is a definitive way to simplify evaluation of limits. It is not directly evaluating limits, but only simplifies evaluation if used appropriately. In effect, this rule is the ultimate version of cancellation tricks applicable in situations where a more down-to-earth, genuine algebraic cancellation may be hidden or invisible. So the first thing we always do with limits is we plug in the limit. Right? We'll plug in A. All right, so direct substitution followed by some kind of factoring or conjugation of some sort. Um, and if that's just, like it says here, hidden or somehow invisible, um, we use L'Hopital's rule in a certain scenario. The two scenarios that we'll use it in are if we get 0 over 0 when we do a direct substitution or infinity over infinity. Um, options like 0 over 0 could uh, make you think factor or conjugate something like that, L'Hopital's rule will always overwhelm those and, and be a better option, a more efficient option. If you get infinity over infinity, or negative infinity over infinity, or even infinity over negative infinity, as long as you get some form of infinity over infinity, L'Hopital's rule applies. The plus and minus, like it says here, doesn't matter. Um, so then... We cannot just plug in to evaluate the limit. And these are traditionally called indeterminate forms, right? So if you get a form like this, this is called an indeterminate form, all right? Uh, typically, you can write IF for indeterminate form. The unexpected trick that works often is that amazingly, we are entitled to take the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator. And we can do that actually as many times as we want, as long as each of the results when we do direct substitution comes out to be an indeterminate form. This is not the quotient rule though. Many people will do the quotient rule here and it is not true. It's just the derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom. If we continue to get an indeterminate form, we go ahead and we use L'Hopital's rule again. If we get some form that we know, either number over number, or number over zero, or zero over number, or some kind of indeterminate form. Right here we continue again with L'Hopital's. In any one of these cases we would know we'd get an answer. We'd get uh, some kind of does not exist, and we'd get an answer. Right, zero over a number would be zero. All right, let's try a few. All right, we know this limit. We know that this limit is a special limit and it should equal one, right? So we're gonna have that in our back pocket here for a moment. But if I do a direct substitution, what would the sine of zero over zero be? Well, that would be an indeterminate form. So I'm gonna use L'Hopital's rule. I like to use this symbol here. L'Hopital's rule says I can take now the limit as x goes to 0 of the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator. Derivative of cosine or sine is cosine. Derivative of x is 1. Now I do a direct substitution. Cosine of 0 over 1 is equal to 1 over 1. And look at that. The limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x equals one. L'Hopital's rule makes that very, very easy. Okay, let's try another example, direct substitution. Uh, zero over e to the zero minus one. Well, that would be the same as zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form. Therefore, L'Hopital's rule applies. I take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over the derivative of the bottom, which is 2e to the 2x. 
Direct substitution of 0 in there, I'd get 1 over 2e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, so I get 1 half. So then the limit as x goes to 0 of x over e to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 1 half. All right, on example three, I went ahead and I plugged in infinity. I'd get infinity over infinity, which is an indeterminate form. So L'Hopital's rule would apply. Uh, therefore, I'm gonna take the limit as x goes to infinity of the derivative, which would be two x over two e to the two x. If I do a direct substitution here, I'll still get two times infinity over two e to the infinity. Again, an indeterminate form. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule yet again. And the numerator is going to look nice after that. So limit as x goes to infinity of 2 over what would be 4e to the 2x. Direct substitution would be 2 over infinity, which would equal 0. Therefore, the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared over e to the 2x will equal 0. All right, let's try another. Uh, limit, oops, I'm sorry, direct substitution. The natural log of infinity will be infinity, and infinity minus 1 will still be infinity. So we got an indeterminate form. So L'Hopital's rule applies. So the limit as x goes to infinity of the derivative of natural log of x, which is 1 over x, over the derivative of x minus 1, which is 1. We do a direct substitution, so we get 1 over infinity over 1, which will equal, in essence, 0. So the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of x over x minus 1 equals 0. Alright, let's, uh, let's see what a direct substitution would look like here. Uh, it looks like I'd get cosine of pi, which is 1. Oops, I'm sorry, negative 1. The sine of 2 pi would be 0 plus 1. We're going to get a 0 on top. And pi squared minus pi squared would be uh, pi squared minus pi squared would also be 0. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule here. I get an indeterminate form. Therefore, L'Hopital would say that the limits as x goes to pi of the derivative, which would be negative sine x plus 2, I'm doing the chain rule along with this, cosine x, and the derivative of 1 would be 0, over 2x. Okay, so I'm going to plug pi in there, uh, direct substitution there, negative sine of pi, well that'd be 0, and 2 times the cosine would be negative 2 over 2 times pi, which would be 2 pi. So it looks like that will evaluate to negative 2 over 2 pi. 2's will cancel. And it looks like I get, uh-oh, I got a problem. Where'd the negative, what happened here? Ah, I see what I did. Uh, this should be plus, which makes that 1 over 2 pi. All right, one last example. Why don't you try this one on your own? Go ahead and pause the video right now, otherwise I'll keep rolling. Uh, okay, so direct substitution, tangent of zero. Well, if I do direct substitution of three, I'd get tangent of zero, which is zero. And if I do a direct substitution of three, I'll get three minus three, which is zero, in determinate form. Therefore, L'Hopital tells us that we take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom separately. That would be secant squared of x minus 3 over, it looks like, 3 e to the x minus 3 minus 1.
right? The derivative of this would be itself. Okay, we do a direct substitution of 3. Um, looks like in the numerator, right, the secant squared of 0. So the secant of 0, secant of 0 equals 1. Right? It's the reciprocal of cosine. So if I square a 1, I get a 1. In the denominator, I'm going to plug 3 in. And I'll get 3 times e to the 0. Okay, e to the 0 is 1 minus 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So I'm getting a value of c uh, 1 half here. And it looks like we're good. All right, that is the last lesson of this chapter on L'Hopital's rule. Good luck on the test, and we'll see you in Chapter 5.